Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Locker Room on this Wednesday, August 16th. I'm Alan Locker. Today, we are here to pay tribute and celebrate the remarkable life of the one and only Elizabeth Hubbard, who we lost in April of this year. Two of her biggest fans, friends, and co-stars, Martha Byrne, who played her on-screen daughter, Lily Walsh, and Rose D'Angelo, and Scott Bryce, who played her lover-turned-business associate, Craig Montgomery, will honor Liz by sharing memories, funny moments, and most importantly, what they learned from working opposite this incredible mother, actress, and humanitarian. As the world turns, fans were mesmerized by Elizabeth's creation of Lucinda Walsh from the moment she walked on screen in April of 1984. She was nominated for a Daytime Emmy Award for nine times for her role as Lucinda. In addition to Lucinda, fans loved her portrayal of Dr. Althea Davis on The Doctors, for which she received a Daytime Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress. Don't forget, we'll be taking questions throughout the hour as we honor this incredible woman we called Liz. Please help me welcome to the locker room, Martha Byrne. Hello. What a Hi, pleasure Martha. to be here. How Hello. are you? I'm great, great. I'm happy to spend some time talking about one of the greatest people on yeah. the planet. So I'm happy to be here for, for Liz and for you and for the fans. And um, good, good, so let's, good, let's good, do it. Good. It's going to be great. Well, you know, I am so sorry for your loss, for all of our losses. I know that the fans are sending their love to you and to Jeremy. Um, and I'm so grateful that you and I got to get Liz to do this with you first. And then she did it with the doctors. But to do the locker room, um, just to have her vibrancy in that interview. Yes. And, yes. you know, thankfully with YouTube, you know, not only as the world turns lives on, but they get to hear her in her own words. I love that. I think that technology is something that she was not a fan of. <laughs> so to get her to come on the the phone, you know, do uh, was just crazy to her. You're like, what do you mean a computer and there's questions? And <laughs> I said, it's going to be great. You're going to love it. You know, and there was a trust that she had that she knew that if I was inviting her to do something, that it was going to be fun and important and she always enjoyed doing that it's like when i had her do anacostia when i invited her to do anacostia that was like completely out of her you know comfort zone but she jumped in because liz is never afraid to do anything uh so it was nice that she had that for the fans to hear her speak outside of lucinda uh for you to do you know and, and interview her so thank you for doing and, that and I'm it's so rare it's so rare, you know, sadly, because our daytime uh, community, our daytime shows didn't get a lot of respect in the mainstream media. So you don't right. have a lot of those interviews, you, don't. you know. So like we had is... SoapNet, you know, we did soap when SoapNet was around. It was such a success <laughs> because I feel like people drew, they wanted to see more about our, our, our actors and the behind the scenes. And so that was a, a momentary, wonderful opportunity. But you're right. You know, the we, fact we that flew you out that. pregnant. I think you were there for the I'm very pregnant. Yes. <laughs> I was always very pregnant. I was never just a little pregnant. So yeah, I'm living on the couch with this baby. Um, totally. That was nice. But again, that was just like a little snippet. You know, when we did the talk, it was a little snippet. And so you, this is, was a great platform for the fans to actually hear Liz at length speak about her career and the love that she had for the craft. So true. Um, just so everybody knows, we think Scott's joining us. We don't know where he is. He did commit. Um, hopefully, he'll join us soon. What do you think she'd think of us doing this for her? Well, before she passed, a few years before, we started kind of gathering pictures of her. And I really wanted to do something in honor of her because of her career. I think she'd love, love it. I, I feel like as humble as she was, I, I feel like she recognized that she had accomplished uh, and worked so hard in her career as an actress, also as a philanthropist, as a humanitarian. Uh, you know, she was a, a, a force to be reckoned with and one of a kind. So I think she would really love this. She loved the fans. And I, I feel like we've, we've really made that clear to, to the audience is that everything was for the fans. So the fact that we're sitting here talking about her and the fans being able to have a voice and ask questions as if she, you know, I can answer as best as possible, but I know she would trust us to give her respect and dignity, uh, very important to her. She was very proud of, of her work. So I think she would, she would love, really love this. 
you know, it's been a hard year for the World Turns cast and fans. Yeah. You know, Lisa, Liz, yeah. Kathy, Marnie. Yeah. I mean, it, it's our family, you know. And, and I think fans have really felt the loss of Lisa and, and Elizabeth along with you and are always sharing Definitely. online um, their care for you, Derek, you know, knowing how important those two women were and are to you. Yeah, I felt that. I felt that very strongly. Um, and, and I think that's a testimony to what we put on the screen together came through the screen. That was real. Those were real emotions. That was a real relationship. Those were real relationships. It was not, you read the lines and we go home and you know we, we're not a part of each other's lives. They were a part of my family. I mean, they're both at my wedding. My, you know, <laughs> they were part of every baby that I had in my life. And, and, we were such uh, so close to each other that must have come through the screen or else why would the fans respond and in such a visceral way? Isn't this from your wedding? You shared this on social media. Yes, yes, yes of Scott it's and, and Lewis, yes. such a great picture. Isn't it? I've got great pictures from that wedding. Kathleen Widow's dancing up a storm. You know, her. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, but we were, you know, we are family. And that's why when we lose one of our, our own, it's, it's, it's unlike anything else when you work together on a soap opera, as you know, Alan, is you're, you're there every day. You see your ups and downs. You're at your most vulnerable on camera and off. It's not like a TV series which ends and goes on hiatus and then maybe never comes back. You're talking about 19, 20 years every day. And the fans are there with you. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting. In my own personal life, when things are t difficult and the fans are there supporting me, it's like not a day has passed, which I feel like we've built this friendship and relationship with each other. That's why I value their support and want to give back to them about Liz and, and, and Lisa as much as I can, because without the audience, we wouldn't have the opportunity to, to share our emotions and our ups and downs on the roller coaster ride of Lucinda, Lily, Iva, unless we had the fan support. So I'm grateful that we have the support and how we can maybe close that chapter a little bit and make it a little less painful for all of us with the loss of these wonderful people, especially Liz, obviously, that was we're talking about today. It's, it's interesting because I, I spoke to Jennifer Ash earlier today who mm. sent her love and oh. she's going to sit down soon, but explaining like that people still deeply care about yeah. a character like, or an actress like her who has been off world turns for so long and right you know how they feel um just comes through um you spent a lot of time with liz during her illness can you share anything about you know watching sure. her fight and sure i i i feel i saw her not, not too long before she passed uh she was i went to her home and you know she had a cane and she was kind of you know, I'm laughing because I said, okay, put your right foot. And she goes, I know the difference between left and right. You know, she gave me one of those, like, don't, please don't. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm just trying to help, you know, I'm just trying to help. But she had like a system about how she would get up and she was, again, having a conversation like we're having very engaged and very independent at the time Jeremy had was traveling. So she was there alone. So it wasn't like, you know, she really had um, a, a system going in her, her life. And then she took a, a turn for the worse around Christmas time and never recovered from that. And, you know, I would see her, I went to, she was in a fac rehab facility for a while and I went to visit her there and she introduced me as her daughter when I came in. And it was, you know, I tried to make it as pleasant for her as possible, of course, with Jeremy, her son too. Both of us were on the same page about what she would want and what she wouldn't want. Uh, we both agreed on that, you know, as much as I am her daughter, I'm not, I'm not her daughter, you know, so the fact that Jeremy was so open and so it, it, open to involving me in those big decisions, I feel like since he's an only child, yeah, you know, we, we looked to each other to kind of help guide. I had been through a loss, you know, I, he had lost his father as well, but we, we, I, I was a little fresher to me about kind of the, the what was going to happen, you know, um, so we knew she wanted to be home 
that was important to get her home. And we both really worked hard, especially Jeremy, to get her home so she could be where she felt most comfortable. And I saw her a few days before she passed away. And she was talking to me, you know, she, she woke up kind of, and we we're having a very, you know, limited conversation. And, and I got to tell her some stories. And I said, you know, about when we first met, and I always tell her this story, and I've repeated this many times, is that it was 1984, I guess it was 85, I guess. And I knocked on her door, and I just replaced one of the actresses who left to play her daughter, Lucy Deacons. And I, and I opened, she knocked on the door, and she opened it, and she put her glasses on. She looked at me, and she, I said, I'm playing your daughter now. And she goes, oh you have the most beautiful eyes. You know, she was looking me over already. You know, she was already figuring out this person, this actress, this child um, from the moment I knocked on her door. So, to, so I told her that story. And then I just thanked her for all she had done for me. I mean, you know, in soap operas, when we have scenes like that, which are very powerful and, and emotional, emotional. It, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't that, that, but it but was... It was Poignant, poignant and important. And, important. and I said, and I said you, you've done so done much, so much of any, any how much you've done. You've done. And, then and then she said, she said you could do you more. Could do more. It's like those are like those final, words, final to words to me. So, so I take that, I take that to, heart. to heart. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm getting I'm repeat, repeat on the back. On the back. I know, I know. I'm Scott, I'm going to... Ask you, ask you to restart your computer, computer if you don't mind. Don't mind. Yes. Restart my computer? Yeah, because yeah, it, it might. You're. Uh, you're uh, okay. We're we're right right right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, that's okay. That's okay. I, just wanted, I wanted to. to and and I, I didn't mean to pick up the phone, but it was him. So. No, it's fine. I'm, I can't even, I'm, I'm just telling. I could talk about it for, yeah. forever. I, I feel like what's important about that story is. I was not just thanking her as a as an, a, a friend or as an actress, I, I, as a mother, as a human being, as a humanitarian, as an advocate, as a fighter, as a, you know, all the things that she was in life, as aside from being an actress, that meant so much to me. Because of all this, if, if, if Elizabeth Hubbard is saying to me, after all she has done, when she went to DC, she's been... Uh, she was in mm -hmm. Bosnia, she was in Uganda, she was fighting for women's rights, she was fighting for refugees. If she's telling me I can do more, and she comes from her, that she believes that I can do more than, than, than that, I, I, I feel like that's my greatest takeaway from having her as a part of my life, that I, that I made enough of an impression on her as a person that she felt that I could, I could take it to another level um, and I take that very, I, I really take that responsibility greatly to my heart because I, 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 I needed that. I needed that encouragement. I trusted her. Um, and you know, and it's just, I can't you said even it, put it into words. You said words. it beautifully. Just, you said, yeah, yeah. She, you really she's did. really, she, she's, she really, as an actress, and we can talk about that a bit, I have never in my life, I always say this, and many people who've heard this story before, I acted before, I was never an actress before I met Elizabeth Hubbard. There's a difference. Love that. Love that. There's a difference. I was well, a child Scott, actor, yeah, and I ahead. did my thing, and I, you know, child actors are supposed to be, do your lines, say your words, go home, don't ask questions, and she was the complete opposite of that. And she freed me from, and, and showed me things about myself as an actress that I didn't even know I could do. And we took risks and we fell down and we got literally sometimes and got up again. Um, I, you know, what you just said about incredible. you you and the risks as an actress, it's so interesting because, you know, she did that for everybody who she worked with on set, basically. If anybody sure. could watch her on set, but I also know from the people you know who are writing me, fans who want to be actors or you know just mm. watch her, the things that yes. they have learned from her is Good. she, she loves that. that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Scott, oh, I don't, Scott, I don't, I don't know, know what it is. Still? <laughs> yes. Um, oh. Oh. Any better? Yeah. Yeah. 
No, I think we're better. No, no. no. Do you do you have you earphones? Have earphones? I'll have to go get them. I'm gonna turn my volume off. I, I I'll, still I'll, like going. I'll mic you. I'll mic. I'll right back. Mute you. <laughs> hey, let me let me read a couple things, Martha. Yeah. Simone said, "I have been waiting for this tribute since her passing. I am forever mm. grateful." that she sat down with us twice in 2020. We are fortunate to have been able to hear her words and wisdom. She is so much more than an actress. She is a teacher, mentor, an icon. She is a master at her craft. And when she speaks, her words are her master class. Mm. Beautiful. D says, Elizabeth Hubbard as Lucinda Walsh, as I like to say, something else. I always thought that Elizabeth wasn't acting as Lucinda. Instead, she was mm. being Lucinda with all her quirks, impulsiveness, outrageousness. I love the way she laughed at something that excited her or the way she got angry or frustrated. It felt mm. like Elizabeth wasn't acting. Like many have said before, she was ad-libbing and you had to be ready at whatever she threw out at you. Yes, Doug Marlin created Lucinda, but Elizabeth made her all her own. That's Incredible. true, and, you know. But she, you know, Doug Marlin didn't create Lucinda, which is interesting. Yeah, I didn't. I, I wasn't. Sh yeah. wasn't sure on that. Yeah, he she, he didn't. But but so he inherited <laughs> Elizabeth, <laughs> which God bless. Right? I hear nothing. I see nothing. I hear nothing. Um, <laughs> and, and it. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, this yeah. is so frustrating. Um, I hear nothing. But that's working. You don't hear me. It's not reverberating. Um, I don't hear you. Oh, did you mute yourself, Alan? No. He, settings. Settings. Nothing. Stop. I got nothing. I'm unplugged. I've You're got live nothing. right now. Settings. I'm going to try one more time. Signing out and signing back. So no, sorry, folks. Unplug the unplug the thing. Did you unplug? <laughs> that, all right. <laughs> So um, I have two two messages from two Michaels. Michael Howland says, this lady is an icon and I still mourn her loss. She had my heart, not just, not just the character she created as Lucinda, but the powerhouse that will forever be Elizabeth Hubbard. She is indeed a legend and actors and performers can learn so much from her. She could play the hero, the villain, bring on the romance or break your heart. We cheered for her. We were riveted by her. She was electric a forever that could not be contained and she made as the world turns an extraordinary place that had me hooked for 25 years wow michael baird sa uh, bird says i am a school teacher so i will myth miss this but i have to say the mother-daughter relationship between lucinda and lily was perhaps my favorite in daytime and of course lucinda's relationship with craig was one for the ages when it came to side-spitting comedy and hard-hitting drama Michael wants you both to know that your magical work on As the World Turns will this never, will never be, forgotten. be forgotten. Oh, that's so you know, you know, still, do you have that echo? Have, yes, yes. So if you so try, if you try connecting, connecting, connecting the the headphones again, headphones go, again to settings, go to settings down, down below. Down below. <laughs> I'm so sorry about this, guys. If you use if the you settings, use the settings button, button, you yep. should well, we never have click on your, 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 your phones. Your phones. <laughs> Weren't those beautiful, Martha? They were. I, I feel like I would love to, and I had posted something about talking about that, acting, talking about point. acting at some point. And even in the last couple of months of Liz's life, we talked about acting. And about how it's changed so much, you know, how the system, as far as how you 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 get to do your work and prepare, um, and rehearsals and things like that, and that was very that upset her a lot. That there was the process had diminished so significantly from when she was, you know, working either on the soap or on. on <laughs> I don't even or, know if that if that is the 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 truest word. It just disappeared. It just dis it just appeared it just disappeared right it was just, it was so upsetting to her you know no rehearsal no this no that yeah. go 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 hurry 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 I mean the woman did so much preparation I mean her script would come in and you you know <laughs> you couldn't read her handwriting but it was filled with all kinds of things in the side and this and that and you know the joke was 
she'd rewrite every scene and then end up saying the lines that were the original <laughs> script sometimes, but yet not, you know? And then, you know, you do something with her and you had to listen. You couldn't, you couldn't just say your line. You had to actually, you know, which is what acting is, right? It's listening. Um, Cause she would never say the same thing twice. Never, you would never have the same scene twice with Liz, you know, which was brilliant. I, I mean, as an actor, it's never supposed to be the same. It, you never know what someone's going to say in life when they say it. So you have to be ready to receive her, her bit, her, her, all of her, you know? And I've seen actors that would get very intimidated by her and not be able to, to, to play because they were afraid. If they jumped in, if they jumped in with her, she was happy to help you. Like she, she was a teacher first and foremost. I feel like people don't even understand. Like, and I talked about this, you know, she taught Shakespeare to, to inmates in, 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 in prisons after in the 90s, the late 90s, I think. And she talked about that, what it was like to teach prisoners about Shakespeare and what it was about and how they understood it and how they could relate to it. And she, she understood that anybody could, could appreciate acting because it's emotion and it's feeling. We all have that. And I feel like in today's society, there's a lot of upsetting things about today's society, I think, that, 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 would have, that bothered her, but more about how we've lost the part, you know, and, and emotion becomes mm, almost untouchable. You know, she wanted to dig in and find out. And she tells a story, she told a story about how when she was living in New York, she would sit in a restaurant on, I don't know if it was on Riverside Drive or somewhere in, up in New York. And she would just sit there and watch people for hours and hours and hours as they would walk past and create story in her mind about who, what was... What was their backstory? Um, human behavior. You know, she taught me a lot about that and how uh, people's behavior reflects what they're feeling. Um, but fun, you know, something, I mean, talking about Liz, you know, physical comedy, physical, she was very physical. She was a very physical actress. She would grab you and pinch you and spank you and tickle you and grab your hair and sometimes smack you, you know, and you had to go with her on that journey and, and be ready to jump in the pool, you know? And I think I told this story uh, about, I don't know if I was with you or not, or maybe I did it myself that, you know, nowadays we have something called an intimacy coach they have on sets now. Like, you know, you, you can touch someone here, you can touch someone here, you can, you know, you can't do whatever, right? I said, I would, I would never want to be the person that had to tell Elizabeth of <laughs> Hubbard, you can't, you know, you, you know, we're going to tell you this, that, and the other thing. It's like she wanted a free zone to create, to be, to, you know, figure out what the boundaries were for character and, and scenes. Um, and I remember the first time she threw me on a couch, like for the first scenes I, I met, I, I worked with her. She literally picked, like tickled me and threw me on the couch. And I was horrified because I thought, how is this possible <laughs> happening? Um, but it was alive. You know, everything, everything you did with her was, was alive and, and present. Well, you know, thinking of that, Scott, you, this was one of your earliest roles and being thrown up against Elizabeth Hubbard um, at the start of, you know, being on camera. What was that like? What did you learn? Were you scared out of your wits <laughs> when you realized who you were up against? Yeah, all of the above. I mean, first of all, my apologies for the technical difficulties that we've had. And Martha, oh my gosh, so wonderful to see you. You too. Um, it was really uh, the advantage that all of us had is that we really were a family and that that family structure existed at seven o'clock in the morning when you walked into rehearsal. Now I will say any actor who came unprepared for Elizabeth <laughs> Hubbard is taking their life in their hands and being <laughs> and truly being greatly foolish. If you haven't really, as Martha said, she would open up her script and it looked like stream of consciousness on both sides of it, filled with questions and diatribes and notations like this reminds me of like the Dobu tribe and maybe I should be more matriarchal in this moment. And I'm like, wow, Liz, what are you even talking about? So <laughs> it was like a, she was a, a master class every single day, every single scene that you worked with her. 
And if you were willing to do the work and to jump on board, as Martha said, you got to jump in 120%. But the journey that you would go on would be sometimes mind boggling. And mm. often the most mundane scenes were turned into great jewels because she found the humanity and the life and the spark and what made it happen. I mean, mm. the, the interesting thing for us, as, as you know, we became you know lovers on the show. And when I was first in my, my character had been villainous and then gone to jail and I was in quote unquote recovery <laughs> and Doug Marland, the great, probably one of the, I think the greatest daytime writer of all time who understood mm -hmm. romance, who understood star-crossed, who understood family. Uh, and those were the days that it was people over plot. Plot was the device to just bring the people together. Um, but that, it, it didn't drive the show. So anyway, he was uh, the writer at the time and I'm now working for Lucinda and it was very vague and we're in the office at like 10 o'clock at night. And Liz looks over because what are we doing here? Seriously, what are we, what is Craig and what are we doing? And I said to my, to her, well, my father, who was a soap star, said, you know, when in doubt, play sex. And Elizabeth's eyes lit up like she just was like, yes, <laughs> that's what we do. And I realized, oh, I guess, well, we're going. And because, you know, you didn't lead Elizabeth anywhere. Uh, mm. you, you followed her. And she did it. And we started to play it. And it was all underneath. And about... Two weeks into that, we got called upstairs to the executive producer's office and we were told in no uncertain terms to take that nonsense out. We're going to stop that. Mm. So we went back to work the next couple of days and was gone. And about a week later, I guess the ratings came in. We were brought back up to the <laughs> office and told, well, put that back in. <laughs> and so we started to play that. And it gave an incredible romantic story because what really saved Craig's soul was love of Sierra and Sierra is her daughter. And I've already been intimately involved with mom. Boy, Thanksgiving is really weird, right? So, and all those dynamics were at play. But working with Liz, I would leave work both exhausted and elated. And I would leave always, I've learned something. Whether it be about the work, whether it be about me, the woman taught me how to do the genre. I'm telling you, she, as Martha said, she was a teacher, but not only a teacher of the work, a teacher of life. She, the way that Lucinda chewed the scenery, I'm telling you, Elizabeth Hubbard lived life that way. She mm. devoured it. She, she witnessed it and watched it and saw the beauty and the magic and the specialness and didn't understand why we didn't live in that moment all the time, that sense of awe, that sense of this is incredible. There's so much to do, there's so much to see. And the only thing that would drive her in any kind of despair I would ever see from her was her sense of justice. And when mm. she saw injustice in the world, it would, it would, it would hurt her personally, sure. I, mm -hmm. I could see it. Um, but she was, Wow, she taught me so, so much, Ellen. I can't even, and more than I probably even know, because as Martha says, you don't know when it's coming. You don't know what she's going to say and, and or what she's going to do. It sticks with you. Uh, by the way, Colleen Zank is watching and says hello. Sweet. Oh, oh. oh. Um, it made me think of, I don't think you know this actor, Scott, but he worked with Martha Bronson Pickett when I spoke to him. Talking about Liz, he said every role, Everything he did after spending time working with Liz, he thinks of Liz when he walks on a set. There's some, you know, whatever she taught him is there and it has stuck. And every role since the day he left World Turns, she's in his thoughts, you know, because it's it's that probably living in that moment thing. Um, yeah, we Liz would say things like, Liz would, Liz would say things like, as a teacher, how she would teach, she, would, she wouldn't say, you know what you should do forget that she'd say like, like scott said what are we doing here so she'd ask now let's go back to that right. let's go back to that right liz knew what they were doing in that in that in that office right liz was giving scott the opportunity to come up with that you know that moment and she she was trying to figure it out too but she was all inclusive with the actor but she wouldn't tell you what to do she made you figure out what it was about and then you worked together she's like oh i like oh that's good i like that let's do that you know let's try that so she wasn't she would never dictate 
to an actor, she would include you and ask questions like, why, like you said, why are we here? <laughs> what are we doing? And she would say, what are we doing? What, what are we doing? Right. I'm like, I don't know. And then she told a story about, you know, we've worked thousands of scenes together and she repeated a couple of special scenes to friends about the two of us that we had together and we talked about how we'd play off each other. And I, you know, she would surprise me and she would do strange things. And, and I guess one of her friends said, well, what did that other, what did that actress do when you did that? She goes, she listened, you know, she listened. <laughs> it's like she reacted to, you know, what I did. And we, we had so much fun together. Um, but you're right. You leave exhausted. You're better for it. Her, her view of the world is unlike anybody else's I've ever known. You know, what she's seen and her life experience is very, I mean, probably one millionth of the percent of this country has ever seen the things she's seen and experienced the things that she's experienced. So, you know, like Scott says, you'd be sitting there and she'd be talking about, you know, God knows what, and you have no clue, but you listen because you're learning something um, about opera and theater and history and world war ii and she you know she she was just she was just a, a, an endless amount of knowledge which she brought to the page um and she would say things like after world turns was over she'd be like you know i was at the bank and i saw the woman behind the, the teller and she did this thing and she goes i have to remember that for something like she's right. still taking mental notes for notes. a character that she may never play you know um business would, God, only if she had, that. only if she had written all of those down, we'd have a book of you know those those things that she would love to use. What a, what a what a you know acting uh, course yeah. that would be. Um, let how about we watch both of you in action with Liz? Oh wow, wow, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sad that you couldn't acknowledge my Thanksgiving invitation or even the flowers that I sent. I gave the flowers to uh, my father. They brightened up his hospital. Do you think I might come in just for a short time? I don't think so. After what Dusty told me about the last time that you were here when uh, he wouldn't co opt Darling, with you me. know that if I overreact, you know me and you know why. It's because I love you and I am frustrated and I feel helpless. Apparently, you can forget the 18 years that you were my daughter. I can't. I am not unaware of my many mistakes with you and the misunderstandings, and I want them. I want all the craziness to stop now. The craziness has stopped. It stopped the day that I moved in with Dusty, and I have you to thank for that, for all of this. Because if it weren't for you, I would never be able to realize what Holden was really like. And I never would have realized how happy I could be here with Dusty. Are you happy? Let me come in. Let's put these in water. I want to talk to you about Holden. I may have misjudged his true feelings for you. Something else. Uh, hold on. Here we go. You get it as well. <laughs> Is John sitting there? Answer yes or no. <laughs> oh, thank heavens I made this telephone call. And Rex, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but I, I do have to resign my seat on the board after all, as of February the 1st. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that. Well, I, I, I'm sure that John would be happy to replace me, and I would be very happy to recommend him. Well, actually, I had someone else in mind. Oh, well, uh, you do whatever you want. But uh, if he should ask you, and I think he might, would you tell him that I telephoned you last night with my definite <laughs> resignation, and that Not last her. night <laughs> I recommended him for a seat on the board? Will you do me that tiny little favor? Do you mind my asking why? Darling, I'll come to the office and explain it all later. And believe me, if you do this favor for me, the hospital will feel my generosity. Well, we'll, uh, we'll talk about it later. Thank you, Rex. I appreciate that. Whew. 
I called just in the nick of time. You, know, you are too smart to be so stupid. Every time you lie to me, you play into John's hands. Do you understand oh, that? what difference does that make? Look, we are not talking about one of your business deals, damn it. I'm trying hey, to talk about get, my future. Don't get angry at me. I have read. Hello, why I trust you, I have... Lucinda. The only person you care about yourself. Now, the amazing thing about her, too, when she played the deviousness, when she played the manipulation, when she played the, the chess games that she would do with people's personalities and their stuff, all of it driven by this overwhelming love inside of her. She wanted the best for her daughter. She wanted to be the best yeah. mother possible. And that drive was always central. And then it allowed any other mayhem or madness to happen. And she could like, you know, rue it or learn from it or not, or any of that. But it, it, it was, you watch what she did, even that scene with Martha, how many emotions running through that woman's face when they're barely moving. She's, she doesn't move. And history is running past those eyes. And so yeah. both, both outrageously powerful and remarkably vulnerable like whisper glass at the same time. Mm. It was remarkable to watch. And, and it's, you know, I read something from a fan, Michael Hallen, who said he stuck with the show 25 years. And, you know, viewers watching a mother do that is what people are tuning in for. But I think so many times the powers that be don't think we want to see the mother caring mm. you know they're not giving liz front burners people want to see that relationship of mother and daughter or or that mother you know tigress going you know fighting for her kids love you know yeah it, and know that and know that everything good know that liz would do that even if the scene was written surfacely she would, would add that deeper dimension because if she didn't have that, she didn't believe it. She wouldn't be living it truthfully. And she would live, every scene was every possible emotion inside of her, all the history of it, all the stuff coming at you sometimes like a fire hose. And then she mm -hmm. could turn it off and be this beautiful, fragile young girl looking at you and then spin her head and fire 15 people. So it's, you right. know... <laughs> it was it's so true. One of, <laughs> one of our fans, Dinah, was asking, you know, both of you had both Lisa and Liz on your sides. What was it like watching them together? Well, I mean, look, I think I think Lisa figured out right from the get go, you know, you're never going to. You're never going to get to where Liz is, right? Liz is on that level of energy. You're never going to get there because if you try, she's going to go up one, up and up and up, <laughs> right? So, so Lisa would go the opposite, which is why their dynamic worked very well. And I think, you know, Lisa understood and respected Liz so much that they, their rivalry or their on-camera rivalries where it stayed and Lisa had, had really, again, <laughs> understood Liz's strength. But Liz, so when, when, when Iva came on the scene, that really pissed Liz off um, as a character of Lucinda. So she used that. Like, she always felt like, Lily's my daughter, you know? Now they're gonna change the story. It's like, but that's the point, it's soap operas. But she used that, she used that, that rivalry for her feelings you towards are. Iva to create all this underbelly of, of because the, the bottom line is the insecurity of Lucinda losing her child that she took care of and loved and, and, and raised to, to the Snyders devastated Lucinda because she didn't have anything else that was her life. So Liz took that, that, you know, when when the when that family came in, Liz took that and layered it with this distaste that she had for the Snyders. It worked so beautifully on camera. Um, it it and was they were her dynamic fuel together. It really was her mm -hmm. fuel. Her fuel. It was her fuel, and understandably, right? Because it's you know 
she took her protection of Lily to another level because she was losing her. So she would hold on and make mistakes and do things. And so it, 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 she used that, that, you know, change of story um, in a great way. Of course she would pivot, Liz pivots all the time. Um, but you could see it, like Scott said, you could see that hurt in her, her Lucinda's face about Lily teenage daughter. And I, you know, I, I had, a, I was a teenager, obviously I had my a relationship with my mom that was com complex, obviously. She had a son, very different kind of relationship. So Liz and I would talk a lot about mother-daughter relationships because she didn't understand, that's something that she was like, teenage daughter, what's that like? What's your, you know, and we'd work with that. And Liz, Lisa and I was more like a sister, you know, we had a sisterly relationship. So those scenes were very different. But the three of us together, you have this, interesting dynamic um interesting yeah, i will tell yeah. you that when that the climax of that story you three together were unbelievable that was well, you too incredible you too. Well, what, that i remember that eruption with you three that was just oh my gosh it was like beyond riveting and and it, it, it reverberated after the scenes were over for days i mean you guys were amazing Really Amen. There's, a great, Amen scene. There's a great scene. There's a great scene where someone posted where Lu uh, Iva comes back to Lucinda and says, Lily's gone. Like she ran away after she found out she was adopted. And, and Liz comes behind Lisa and, you know, she doesn't want to touch her. Right. She's, she's, she has this feeling for her of not, you know, she's very intimidated and upset and everything, but she touches Iva like this, you know, and says, <laughs> She said, she'll be okay because she's my daughter. Lucinda mm. said, she's my daughter. She'll be okay. Now, you know, Liz improvised that, right? You know that Liz did that, but it was so powerful because she recognized Iva's heartbreak, but she also didn't want to give, it, but she, she was behind her. So she, she knew it was kind of a safe zone. That Iva couldn't see her face, which was terrified that her daughter had just run away and was upset. Um, but, you know, Scott can talk about this, you know, back in those days, you know, we would rehearse and we would try and we would play and we would figure out and we would mm -hmm. go with the flow and it was like theater. And so all those moments we, we found with each other um, were, were really heavy emotional playground for all of us. Um, and Speaking I told this before she passed too, before she passed, I just, I just want to share this. You know, she had been off the show for a long time and I really made it a point, and I wanted everybody to, I want everybody to know this, that she knew how much you loved her. Like, you know, she'd been out for so long that her relationship with the fans felt like she had lost something, you know, like it, it was such an important part of her life and she didn't feel the same connection because she wasn't on the show. And, and I would tell her how much she was loved and how much, you guys would talk about her and her scenes and and it meant so much to her that you still cared and were still you know loved her so much so i just want everybody to know that if, even to her last moments i would tell her how much she was loved and her fans loved her so please know that because that was as important to her as it is to me for you to know that i got to see her a week before she passed um, and oh. I'm deep, deeply, deeply grateful. Uh, yeah. And I will tell you that even in, in, even at the end, and this isn't Lucinda, this is Elizabeth, there was a regalness in her, mm. a, a level, a, almost royalty, and a, <laughs> and, a, and a presence that still she was like sick and dying and her, she couldn't even get out of the bed and her son's taking care of her who did an amazing job. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, to, to, but to see that power, even mm. in her, in her weakest state was still there. Right. And just to quickly reflect back to that scene with the, the hand that just says so much about Liz. Here's Liz standing behind a human being that she detests <laughs> and that threatens her and mm -hmm. is a mother looking at another mother, sensing the humanity of what she's feeling recognizing it, having empathy for it, and then reaching out to comfort and yet only being able to be as dismissive as you would be with a horse because she's mm -hmm. less than. And mm -hmm. all of those complexities are all valid at the same time. 
Right. That's the level of work that was so extraordinary. We need yeah. to put all of Liz's work together and do mm -hmm. that as a class, like just looking to pick up, you know, what Martha just did with that, because I'm sure there are things. Oh, um, millions. Millions. Mm -hmm. um, Teresa was asking, did you both um, hit it off with her immediately or did, you know, it take time to build that strong rapport that you obviously both had with her? I was nervous at first until she made it clear and she did this with people she respected like Martha, like Lisa, like Larry Brigman. If she respected you and respected you as a colleague and a worker, you knew it. And you had, and, and you were engaged with a colleague. Um, and again, it's like, woe to the actor who's ill prepared because if you weren't and you weren't engaging with her and she couldn't, connect then she would dismiss and you were right. and you could be a piece of furniture in the scene because there's nothing for her to play off of <laughs> so she, but she'll play off the furniture she'll, oh, she'll play, play off, off the furniture, furniture. <laughs> right that, better than that actor with me yeah it's true yeah. i've seen it i mean i've seen it i've seen it happen it's like she's gonna make a scene no matter what if you want if you're not gonna play I, she's got to make it something right. um I think and you speak here. Yeah. Could you get that over with? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah right. Hurry up. Or, or, or the best would be also. Well, if you're not, if you're not going to cover me with the shot, then I'm, you know, what I'm, what I'm, I'm acting up a storm over here. Nobody's covering my shot. You know, it's like she. It's like why don't you just put the camera on her the whole time? All the you, time. You know, you, all the time. Um, yeah. And she would do things, you know. And it's so funny because she always pushed the envelope. I mean, pushed the envelope. And we were doing a scene once when I was Rose and she didn't like Rose. So that was always fun to play with her as Rose because she didn't like Rose. So I got a whole different vibe from her when she was, when she, when I was working with her as Rose <laughs> and I'm laying down on a couch. I'm sure I'm repeating the story because it's funny. Um, and Rose passes out on a couch and I have a skirt on. She sits down and she lifts up my skirt and looks under the skirt. Cut, <laughs> cut, cut, cut. <laughs> And now I'm hysterically laughing because I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to hold it together. Cause I'm like, if they leave it in, it's so funny. It's so funny. And I said, and she goes, well, of course they've cut you know, all the good stuff. They're going to cut the good stuff. Right. I said, I said, well, what were you looking for? <laughs> she goes, well, I wanted to see what kind of underwear you were wearing. Why would, what kind of rose does, wear, does rose wear underwear or not? You know, and like, it was just so her, you know, like. It would probably just popped into her mind and then she just yeah. did it, lifts the skirt. Did it, did it, did it, <laughs> cut, <laughs> cut, cut. And I really well, tried to hold it together because I really think they would have kept it, but I laughed because it was so, <laughs> and I well, think that, I wasn't, thank God, wearing underwear. Um, it wasn't always the, it wasn't always the well, case. That so, um, <laughs> oh, um, but that was what's so, that was, that was what's so great about it. But to go back to first meeting her. Yeah. The, the thing that she, like I said, being a child actor, you're dismissed so often because you're the child actor, you know, it's, you come with a mother, you come with a whole thing. <laughs> and my mother was awesome. So my mom was great, but uh, she, was. she didn't, she treated me as a peer. She didn't treat me as a child, which was, first of all, again, playground for me as a 15 year old who didn't know really anything about acting. Um, she, she took me under her wing, but she treated me as one of her peers, which is incredible. I had never been treated like that before, uh, from a directing standpoint an acting standpoint, you know, I never was treated as a peer. I worked a lot as an actress before I as a world turns, but I was never treated as a peer. And she taught me everything that I knew about acting. She taught me everything. And if she hadn't, I mean, I almost got fired right after I started because I was very stiff and I was very uncomfortable and, and Doug came on and didn't really know what to do if I was right if I would fit yeah, with where he was going with the show and Liz just you know gave me that platform to be free so I played we played together and I would try things and she appreciated that she appreciated my my youth and you know I came from my background, you know, this Catholic school girl comes in with my Catholic school uniform with my hair in a ponytail and I had like funny teeth and she would grab me and, you know, 
take pictures with me when I was, she just loved my normalcy, I think, about my life and who I was. And um, I just adored her from, from the moment that I got to work with her. And then the doors, the floodgates open because once you're free enough to be that kind of actor, to work with Scotty, and Scotty and I would work together and rewrite scenes and, and play, and then Lisa and Kathleen Widows and Larry, like it was a playground of, of, uh, of, of, of acting fun and creativity and but it for wasn't me, self-indulgent for any of us not we at all that we were all. all there to serve the script and to serve the story and correct you know and we checked our egos at the door and for in sure. many ways that allowed our best work you True. know and and so we would come in and be able to if we, we respected each other we trusted each other that was one of the big things right. that you know i yeah. know nobody's out to get me i'm i'm, I'm going to cover martha i'm going to cover liz I'm, we're here to protect each other and take care of each other and right. that allowed the playground to really happen and then i will also say we were respected by the producers and by the people right. in the booth who wouldn't try to challenge what was happening nobody tried right. to control it to say, can no. you please stick to the script? We never really heard that, you know? No, um, no. If no. the scene it was very worked, rare. it worked. It was very rare. Right. And it, and it might be because a piece of information that has to come out that's, you know, no, you have to say vanilla bean because it's going to be important in right. Christmas, you know? <laughs> it's going to leave, leave <laughs> so, right. later. Yeah. Right. And, and that would be the only yeah. time, but we were... We were trusted by by producers, by 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 the directors, and even by the writers, and particularly yeah. Doug, who took care of all of us. I mean, you know, as 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 Martha can tell you, we would each have our own dinner meetings with Doug, and who would lay out, "Here's your arc for the next like six months." What actor gets that? You know, to be able to have right. that kind of lead time, and again, that came from respect. So it was remarkable when you get to work with. I mean, you know, I'm a young actor in my 20s. I'm looking over and, you know, there's Liz Hubbard and Larry Brigman. That's who I'm working with. It's like, oh, my gosh, these are some yeah. of the greats ever. And then to have the youth that we did have, like Martha, who you were way less stiff and, and uptight than you think you were. You, you are yeah. a natural, remarkable talent. And that well, is you. also what Liz recognized in you yeah, and you. respected in you, which is why I think she why she treated you like a peer that and you were her daughter. There was a yeah. both a peer and a mothering with you for sure. At the same time, for, for um, sure. absolutely. You, you spoke earlier about those moments of working with Liz. Are there any that you remember? You know, in in the dress rehearsal or you know dry rehearsal that just sticks in your mind of something that you both of you that you worked on and played to to make happen in a certain way. The most intense scene I think I ever did with Liz was uh, her seduction of me. And if you watch her work in that scene in the barn, it is breathtaking in its complexity. And I am pretty singular in that I am devastated, heartbroken, destroyed, and a young man needing to sow his oats, right? And she knows it. And how she manipulated and how she gets close to me. And as I'm trying to push her away, but being seduced by her, feeling her beauty and her power, and then turning into it. And she was, and how she played it was if I was a little boy and she was just touching me. It's all right. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. And as soon as the horned up Craig turned with her, <laughs> she just starts to laugh. She was holding me. I'm doing the sex scene and Liz is laughing. <laughs> and it was so incredibly bold, a weird choice, deeply disturbing in many ways. Cause it wasn't, it's not love. These guys are, should not be together, you know? And yet it was her win and watching Lucinda win, even if it was this, it was, it's extraordinary. Again, every day with her was a masterclass. And so you asked me about, you know, is there a difference? Something happened in rehearsal. Rehearsal is a vague outline of what's maybe going to happen when we get to the floor. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so you'd have to, as Martha yeah. said, the key with Liz, and it's the key to acting. Listen. Because if mm. you are not 100% focused on her, she could take a left turn and leave you in the dust. You'll have no idea where you are. 
She's that's already, true. <laughs> she's gone. That is true. She's gone. <laughs> she's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it's. I think you know we had so many fights, fights characters. You know, Lily and, and Lucinda fought all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> all the time. And she'd hit me, you know, physically smack me. And I remember, and I've told the story, and I, she, she's, she, and I, she, looking back now, she goes, did I, like, I really hit you? I said, yes. Yeah, I was marked for three days. <laughs> three days. Liz's handprint. So I, but I loved it. I would have loved it. Because I was, because again, it was at the point where we had worked together for a couple of months or maybe Lily, I remember it was in the bathroom, Lucinda's bathroom, which filled up the whole studio pretty much. She had a, the tub and the whole thing. And Lily was being a brat. And she just hauled off and smacked me. And they had to pick it up. And I'm sure I'm telling this story if anybody's listened before. They're like, we need to do this slap again. You know, <laughs> we can do it again and again. And I'm like, just hit me. And so she smacks me and she's wearing the rings on her fingers and whacks me again. And then by the time in the actual take where you see it, you, by the, you, by four or five times, you can see like the smack on my face with the ring mark and the whole thing, you know? And she's like, I'm you know, so sorry. I said, this is, but it was great because it was, it was real. My reaction was real. It was, it was probably something you wouldn't do. You know, other actors may not have said, you know, let's try to fake it and go, oh, I'm sorry. It's not the quite the same when she hauls off and whacks you, you know? Because Lily deserved it in a sense because she was being so awful to her mother, like awful. Um, and it's it, it it stayed with me, and, it, and I think it always bothered her later on. Like, oh, I'm so sorry that I, you know, that that happened, and did that really happen? And but I, but I, but I want. I asked her to do it. There's like she asked, "Do you want me to? You know, how do you want to do this?" And I said, "Just you know, haul off and crack me in the face." Um, <laughs> and I'm laughing because it's it. She was so physical, like she, you know. You, you, if she grabbed you, you had, she grabbed you, you know, it was all real um, and passionate and from a place of, of uh, breaking that, that you talk, I talk, you talk, I talk. It was, she was, she was in your face, but it, you know, like Scott says, you walk out of there and you're like, I, you wear that welt with pride because it was like, you, we were at, you were at, on the mat with this woman. I mean, if you can go to the mat, with her, and I probably smacked her back. I don't remember, um, but if I had, she probably said, "Oh, that's great!" You know, we we had. You, you were just gonna say, Martha, if anyone goes to the mat with Liz, they can do anything. Yeah. Yeah. You can. I yeah. Mean, and you, you'll, I mean, you'll wear it, anything. and you'll take it with you to everywhere you go. She was also go, remarkable. And Bronson said. And at times very incongruous, I think. Like I remember a scene she did with me, she was so angry, so rageful. I'm trying to work things out with Sierra. I'm trying to now mess with her company. And she was, the, it was a short speech about how much she detested me and loathed me. And while she was giving that speech, she just kept caressing my face, touching my <laughs> lips, rubbing my eyes, going, I just loathe you. I can't stand. Right. It was so bizarre. <laughs> and you and okay. and yet so real. Yeah. And so great and so telling yeah. and so revealing about who she really, Lucinda, really was. And yeah. you know, yeah, no, she, she didn't wear her heart on her sleeve, she wore her soul on her sleeve. You know, yeah, you saw true. the whole deal. Uh, really love, amazing. Yeah. Love that. That's a great. Um, Jill Laurie Hurst just reminded me when loved when Lisa would call her Lucy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Liz, Liz loved that. <laughs> <laughs> but that. Love that. It was great on air. It played so yeah, well. It was great on air. It was yeah, great it's on funny. Great on air. Pushed and Teresa. Teresa said when we were having trouble earlier with Scott, it was because Martha, you said Liz doesn't like technology. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. She did not like to, she, the phone. She, forget it. Forget she's it. controlling. She's controlling. She's controlling. Also, and understand phone. about her, she lived life in so many. They're, they're, they're so reflective of so many of the you know the characters that she's played. These powerful, adventurous mm -hmm. Althea and the other world, Lucinda. You know, she'd be back from vacation. There's some very strapping six foot four handsome man with an accent in the corner. 
having coffee yeah. who's come with Liz, you know, it's like, who's that? Oh, he's a major in the Netherlands paratrooper division. I met him in Africa. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, of course you did. Of course you did. <laughs> and, of course and that's she normal. Took me, she took me to the UN. <laughs> she took me as her guest to the UN when she was working with refugee women and, and educated me on that. And, and I think instilled so much of that passion that I have for giving back. Um, I learned that from her as obviously my own mother as well, but I saw her in action. I saw how powerful she was and how her presence garnered attention and respect. Um, fans from all over the world who love her. It's, you know, she would say to me, and I got to meet the president of pick a country, right? Pick a country because I was <laughs> Lucinda, because I was right. Lucinda. So she used that as a positive to, to, you know, she had a, once she did a seed campaign where she asked fans to send seeds to her that she could help send to help people, you know, grow their own food in another mm -hmm. country. And, you know, she yeah. did things. She also worked again, like I said, with the prisoners and, and she worked with, uh, uh, I think with the puppies that worked with prisoners to help prisoners understand, you know, empathy. And so she really, lived life and took her role on this planet very seriously and the responsibility behind it. And I feel like I learned a lot about that sort of responsibility, not just from my own mother, who's exactly that way, but from Elizabeth. How That's you can a use we your, all your, can take from yeah, her, all of us. Yeah, and, I, and her also her, her, the fact that she, she knew her role in life came with such a great responsibility to the fans, to the universe, to less people who are who needed her. Um, she gave and gave and gave so much that we all could learn from her as again as an actor, yes, as a human human being. Um, she was just one of a kind doesn't even cover it at, to me. Martha, I think I heard you talk, you know, what was it like for Liz? you know, being in the studio and watching her co-stars work, I think you mentioned how much Liz respected Maura's work, but what that must yes. mean if, if Liz stopped you in the hallway and didn't work with you and said, great, great job or something. I mean, what yeah. that must have felt like yeah. to some of the, the people, at, you know, as the world turns coming from. And, and the line would be more like, oh, Alan, that was quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, that was quite interesting. I saw the show today. Yeah. You were you were quite interesting. interesting. I like what you did there. And she would do yeah. that. Like she would. Yeah. She, you know what she would say? She would say they're quite good. They're quite yes. good. You know? They're quite but, good. But Mora, Mora specifically, she had a very strong uh, uh, respect for Mora West. I think she recognized her talent from the get-go. And when we were out in the Emmy, at the Emmys and we presented together, Liz and I, a few years ago, which was so much fun to travel with Liz and do that. And Maura was up for the Emmy. She goes, oh gosh, I think, I hope she gets it so we can give it to her, you know, be able to give it to her. She just, you know, Eileen Davidson won that year, but she just always says, Maura is just always good. She's always so good. And I think that that means volumes coming from Elizabeth, right? It's like mm. she, her biggest compliment she ever gave me and, you know, she gave me many, you know, she's always wonderful and generous and, and supportive, but she said, you know, she goes, you have a stillness that I'll never have. She goes, you, you do, you do so much in your stillness that I, I don't know how to do that. You know, I don't do that like you, as well as you do it, you know, kind of thing. And that to me, I, I was like, oh, okay, good. Because that's kind of my work and my kind of how I do my process. And that's why it worked against her because hers is a little bit more, like you said, Scott, like she really filled the room and she, every moment, every second, and you kind of have to be, you, you have to be receptive to her and you then can't bounce compete with her. it. Yeah. You, you can't compete. No, no, no. Yeah. The no. way you described so, Lisa, like Lisa knew to take it down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and but filling the moments, you're still filling your moments in the stillness and making it, like you said, that scene that we had together at the door, it's like, there's so much underneath all of that. Um, but I learned that from her, you know, I, I, she, she needed to understand that I, I, I learned what acting was and what it, what, what really was by her working with her. But not only that, I'll tell you, taking her the skills in life about what happens on the stage 
to recognize someone who's being manipulative, lying, generous, secretive. It, it goes from the stage to life. Their behavior from life to the stage is the same. And I, I told her that, you know, I would tell her about something was going on in my life. I would say, oh, I have to tell you something that so-and-so was wearing X or, and they said it this way. And she's, you know, so she educated me about people's behavior, um, which has helped me in my own life as to why people do what they do and, and how to respond to it. it. From a psychological standpoint, as a writer, if I write something, understanding that. So she, she's, I, there's not enough time to even thank her. Um, well, Martha, I before, tried. We, before we uh, end, you shared mm. this Yay. absolutely beautiful moms. Photo. Moms. <laughs> you know, it's got to be quite special when you can have, I mean, you know, Kathleen, Lisa, Liz, and then mom. Yeah, but, quite a few moms. I mean, mom. <laughs> a lot of moms. A lot of moms. And they all had, they all had a, a lot of every, very different roles in my life. I'll tell Strong you. personalities, to say the yeah, least. all but, of them. All but of them. What was it like watching Elizabeth and, and Mary together? You know, they weren't friends. You know, it, it's interesting because as much as time as I spent with Liz, my mom dropped me off at the studio and, and went home and left me, you know, to be raised by these incredible women in, some, in a lot of ways. You know, my life at home was very much my very, like you, like you know, Alan and Scott, like I went normal. to football games. I went to Catholic school. It was normal. <laughs> yeah, I had, you know, normal. boy troubles. And But when I was at the studio, that was my playground and my mom respected that and knew that I was was with people who, who loved me and um, knew you were safe yeah she knew you were and I was safe. safe I was safe but I was having fun and she knew that I was having fun and loved all you guys so much um but I look back now as a as a mom as a as a grown woman mm -hmm. and think holy smokes I mean between Kathleen Widows who was the probably the funniest person <laughs> on the planet completely opposite of her character uh, Emma, um, we hit it off on a level of comedy that I can't even repeat half the stuff that we <laughs> made jokes about. <laughs> um, so she she was so just uh, so much fun to work with and funny, and we just laugh. We still laugh like crazy. And then you have Lisa, who was more like a motherly, sisterly role in my life, and then Elizabeth, who was kind of this, like you said, Scott, this kind of bigger than life. Um, you know, protector, and then my own queen mom, mother. Was queen mother, <laughs> and then my mom, for sure. You know, for sure. My, my, mo my mother, who was a scientist, and my manager, and a tough, and like she, she was just, you know, again, an inspiration as a, a as tough my, my Irish mother. lady, hmm? a tough Irish lady, <laughs> yeah, and 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 but also gave me a lot of freedom, and I and I and, and I appreciate that as a mom, she taught me that as a mother to as you know give you structure but let them be free and be creative uh you know Freedom she was not the type of mom speed. she didn't come to the studio like a stage mom at all she really just let me you know grow and i'm, Freedom I'm grateful to for that succeed, martha freedom to succeed yeah and make mistakes and yeah. and and fall down and 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 understand that this was who i was creatively and and supported and that. And you also, and, you were blessed in that you didn't have as sadly as so often with stage mothers, not trying to live her life through you. There was no vicarious, all. there was no jealousy, there was nothing, there was no pressure no. even, you know? No, was, no, I could quit at any time. Like right. I could stop at any time. It was, it right. was really my, I was all driven by what I wanted to do and not my mother. And I think that's why I still did it for so long because of that. I think a lot of kid actors don't have that. Plus they don't have the kind of people I got to work with to understand the craft. Most child actors stop because either the parents, you know, are controlling them or they don't, it's not fun anymore. Well, it was never fun for a lot of those kids. It was just something right. that their parents wanted them to do. I, 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 I got to work with Scott. I mean, I'm, we were talking about a scene, Scott, that we did together that we'd like switched each other's lines and, and Liz, yeah. Liz and I did that too. And it was <laughs> yeah, better, just, you know? Um, yeah. See if I they notice that. in the booth. Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, it was before really, we, it was, before was we end, what, what will you both miss most about Liz? I'll let you start, Scott, because it's a tough one. I guess it's sort of uh, there's a 
you know, and and this sounds like philosophical, bordering on religious. You cannot destroy energy or matter. You can change them. They can't be destroyed. Liz's energy was so unbelievably profound that I cannot believe it's gone. It's transitioned. It's something else. Um, and I, 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 I am left with the feeling not of loss or sadness with her because she lived a remarkable, amazing life, but of gratitude. I am so mm. deeply grateful that I had a chance to work with her, that I had a chance to know her, that she was my teacher and my colleague. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I think that one of the things she said to me years ago, years ago when we were still on the show, she said, you know, when actors would say, or anyone would say, I, I, I feel like I've learned everything. She would say, well, then quit. <laughs> if you, think you, if, you know, if, if you think you've learned everything as an actor, you need to quit because you never stop learning. And I feel that for her, for people who are watching this and listening, she found in the smallest, what well, we would say the smallest moment, the smallest thing, you know, we were, here's a, here's a story. So when she was in bed and she was passing and outside her window, she had a bird bath. And I said, Oh, let me go fill the water, fill it with water. She goes, no, let God do that. And I thought it's so interesting that she, she was a, she was not a religious, she, she studied the Bible more than I ever have. I think that's important for people to know. She did, she went to Bible study to learn more about the Bible. She knew way more than I do as a, as a, as a, uh, I don't know when I know anything compared to what she knew. Well, and we should all say she was probably well, most more well-read than anybody I know. Yes. Yeah. She had millions of books. Um, you know, she read all, every day. She, she, that's, that's, if you want to really honor Liz, there's a few things you can do. You can pick up a book and read something that, is out of your comfort zone. And she was a World War II, um, she really felt World War II. It was something very, something very, very pained her greatly and wants to educate, wanted to educate more people on the history of World War II. Um, that really meant so much to her. And, and, and we were together in um, Amster Amsterdam together. We traveled, through Amsterdam together and I got to she got to show me where Hitler was you know plant plotting and she showed me the restaurant and the place where he was and she educated me on on a much bigger higher level uh than I never really have ever had have been before but she would want people to talk to each other she hated the phone like she literally hated telephones because she felt like people weren't communicating anymore and talking to each other face to face and, and, and experiencing each other anymore, that really upset her. And if you want to honor her, you can reach out to somebody physically, not just on the phone, have a lunch, have a coffee. And when you're sitting across from them and you're talking to them, notice how they pick up their cup of coffee. Notice how they order the cup of coffee. You know, that's something that she would, and ask them, why do you like your coffee that way? Yeah, don't so tell them that. anything. Like, ask them why. <laughs> yeah. Right. And you know, she said to me, it's so funny because she said to me in, when she was, you know, I came in, my hair was plucked in a, I, you know, I, I ran up there and my hair was in the ponytail and she's like, why do you wear your hair like that? Why are you wearing your hair like that? And I said, I don't know. I just ran out of the house. You know, she said, oh, it's not that I don't like it. It's just, why are you wearing why? those earrings? And, <laughs> and she goes, are those real? Are those diamonds real? They look real. <laughs> you know, like she was really studying, still studying me after all these years. She, she, and then she would say so many, so many wonderful things. Like you do, you look beautiful. Like she would look at me and go, you look beautiful and mean it, you know, like genuinely looking at me and I feel like in our society today I feel like we don't do that enough we don't reach out to the human side enough there's no other reason why we're still talking about this wonderful woman and the work she did on as the world turns the other than the fact that she shared with all of you her her soul and her human behavior and it felt real to all of you and that's why we're still talking about it so um that, uh, I'll miss every day. I'll miss her every day. 
That's, I mean, you really ended it beautifully, beautifully. That was th those words, Martha, and, and seriously about the, the uh, ideas of what we could do to honor her. I love that. I, everyone pick up a book, talk to somebody, and what you've all said here today, listen. Yep. Listen. listen. Thank, thank you both so much. The fans have loved this. They have loved seeing your faces. They love Liz. I mean, Lucinda truly was a, a full character. Smart, tough, vulnerable, funny, sexy, an amazing businesswoman, a fierce mother, a romantic lead. She showed that women can be all of those things. Pretty great legacy she created with that character. Yeah. And, she, and she left her mark on daytime and will be missed by all who knew and loved her. Yes, for sure. Amen. Amen. Thank you both so much. Thank you for this Thank opportunity, you. Alan. And, Thank you and Martha, you. just so lovely to just look into your beautiful face. Oh, Truly. you too. You too. More, I need to see you. We need to. See, we have to. Look, we have to in see you. Yeah. No, we. Yeah, let's in let's person. make that happen. Yes, in we're make that happen. In as person. I said before, too, and you know, as a fan, if you go on my Facebook pr professional page, ask more questions. I'm happy to answer more questions about Liz and and whatever whatever I can do to help us all kind of process this uh, this terrible Keep loss. Alive. Yeah, for sure. Have a great afternoon, you. Thank you, everybody. You yep. Bye. Thank you to Martha. Thank you to Scott for joining us today. Oh, I mean, she really did leave an indelible mark. Please join me tomorrow, August 17th, when Fiona Hutchison joins me to look back at her time on Guiding Light and One Life to Live and remember another dear friend of hers, Andrea Evans. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. And don't forget, have a safe afternoon, and I will see you tomorrow, everybody. Thank you so much for being here and spending this hour remembering Elizabeth.